the list along with for year end so that you can make sure that you're getting everything done that you need to before January 31st rolls around. Let's look at that. Um, what's new in time saving tips? So this is with SAGE. There's a lot that has been changing with SAGE, both as an organization and as a product. So we want to introduce you to everything that is going on in the SAGE world and things you guys can use to relate to time saving tips. A lot of things that we get a lot of questions about. How do you do this? Or make my life easier. I'm going to share some of those things with you guys today. And then last but not least, since you guys have come this morning, we are going to be giving away three free one hour consulting sessions with you guys. Of course, we love coming out to the office, which is a good one to come out and visit the office. To introduce everybody, I'm Crystal. Um, of course, I've kind of gone around and I've met most of you guys. In fact, I haven't. I have at least spoken to you on the phone. We also have Karen Jones, which again, I'm sure most of you guys know Karen. Um, Sky Duyon and Shane Ash. Now, I did ask for them to share a interesting tidbit about themselves. <laughs> I will start, um, and I am not prepared for this at all. But, um, I don't know, guys. Help me out, Shane. You were you were helping Sky with her tidbit. What did you say? Shane has 17 kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
the Emmys a few years ago. I'm a huge Big Bang Theory fan, so my little addition today. Um, but yeah, thank you for what you do and for being accountants and some of these CPAs. Uh, it's not the easiest job we all know, so thank you. All right, so checking your list twice. I'm going to have the AP portion of this, and what we want to make sure is that you really do think this school year end is awesome. But we all know that this school year end and year end in general is great, right? <laughs> we love January so much. Well, I'm going to help you make January a lot easier starting right now. So first, the first thing you should be doing today and going forward before January gets here is work on your vendor master funnel. So make sure you have everything you need for the coming on. What does that mean? W9. And not stress enough, you need to make sure you have the W9 from all your 1099 vendors because that's going to have their legal name, their taxpayer identification number, their PIN, and those and their address. Those are all required for the 1099. So make sure that you have W9 from your vendors. If you don't, I highly recommend that you go ahead and request them now before it gets into January when they have a million people requesting their W9. Amy has a success story about this. Tell the class. So this is our second year in Spain that we will be printing the money from the payroll system. We don't go out the money on the payroll, but I did a little, I did my test wizard the other day to see how many 1099s I needed to order, and we were only missing three tax ID numbers out of 285. That's amazing. Oh,
first would be in the account table report. A few of the reports you can actually select and print for 1099 if there's a link. You'll see that checkbox in the report screen. Um, a history report, a payment history report, a claim sheet schedule. I also recommend business and type explorer. So if you guys don't use that, give us a call. It's a great tool that you can use to actually build your own report. It's one of the on steroids. Um, Mileage. 
college. And I just kind of want to refresh on how I'm that. Okay. And it's not that nobody else has to deal with that in here. Yeah, we can take that. We can one. do that after the class. There is actually a knowledge base article uh, that covers that and right. share with you guys after. Okay, great. Thanks. Absolutely. Anything else? The next thing I just wanted to briefly cover were the two different scenarios that we typically see when processing payroll to make sure y'all are all clear on which way you're going to do your W-2s at the end of the year before closing the period or after closing the period and kind of the steps that need to take place when you do that. So the first scenario involves printing your W-2s before you issue your first payroll for 2018 which means you will be able to generate your W-2s, all of your forms out of stage prior to that first payroll in 2018. So you will do all of your processes for W-2s and your forms, and then you will make a backup of your company before you close the period. Very important that you make a backup of the company before you perform period of processing and payroll, because all of those tax records are emptied out at the end of the year to make place for your new order and your new year data. The next step would be to install the tax tables and be able to perform your uh, first payroll in 20. So if you are able to do that, that's great and you can move forward a little more smoothly. If you cannot do that, which many of us cannot because we have to run payroll before we're able to actually complete all the W-2 processing. So if you are falling to scenario two, which is you have to complete your first payroll before you're able to print your W-2s, you're going to want to make a backup of your payroll file and then perform period of processing in your live company. You're able to then run your first payroll after you install the new tax table, just as normal. But whenever you get ready to run your W-2s, you need to go into that backup company, be able to run your W-2s out of, and ensure your data is correct in that backup company for your 2017 data. And if the tax table changed data related to limits, in your tax table, you may need to adjust limits in tax table maintenance prior to printing your form, your 941. Then you will change your limits back to what they are for the 2018 calendar year for 2018. Does that make sense to everybody? Or it's not affecting just Correct. The, the tax tables are, are system-wise. It's not just affecting one company. The tax table updates affect all companies with those tables. These are the important dates to remember. Um, fortunately, or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, payroll, everything is due by the January 31st. So you've got to get your W-2s out. You've got to get your tax tables updated before your first payroll in 2018 so that they are accurate for your payroll. And then you have to get your W-3 and W-2s out to the government as well as your tax forms, your 940, 941, all your state forms. Um, when you go to order forms from Sage, these we have the specific forms in here for y'all that you'll want to order if you are going to print in house. So again, we'll provide these slides to y'all for y'all to reference back which form, which form. Then the last thing I'm going to cover is closing your books. This was a cute little um, image on actually performing the closing your books at the end of the year. So just to make sure you're performing all your bank reconciliations, closing your sub-ledgers. So you do want to make sure that those sub-ledgers, your account payable, account receivable, et cetera, agree back to what your general ledger has as the balances for your account receivable account, for your AP account, et cetera. Did y'all have any questions? Do you have questions? Wait, for you to I do have a question. Okay. Let's just say you had to go back and open your general ledger. To January 1st, 2017. Yep. Because you have to make a journal entry. Okay. Um, I know how to go back and open it mm -hmm. because I'm closing monthly. 
Okay. I had to go back and open it January 1. Okay. And make my journal entry. Yes. So to get it closed back all the way through November 30th, I'm in December now, I only have to close the general ledger. Is that correct? I don't have to go through the whole process correct. of closing everything else. Yes. If you are only of changing your general ledger yes. to post a journal entry, you would only have to perform period of processing in general ledger to get it caught back okay. to the end of the week. And actually, the little stuff you've already closed previously, you can just go back in that little drop down where you go to January and change it back. I don't recommend that you have it previously closed. I've closed because every single closing one. processes that run when you actually close the policy, okay. you can perform those already. Yeah. Especially in general ledger, I usually recommend just going back and just change the stuff down. So doing right a journal out. entry and just the, in the general letter is okay. Right. Because right now I'm in December, I could go change it to January, but make my journal entry and then go back into the drop-down window and change it to December. Yes. Okay, all awesome. thanks. In general letter. Yes, general letter only. Yeah, I would recommend that to other models necessarily because things happen when you. No, I'm not yet. Okay. Your question. Uh, yes. So has anyone informed the IRS that people don't get their dates? Anywhere. <laughs> so you do, you know, <laughs> do you do any online banking then? Some. Because you can. But, uh, my clients bought a uh, they send them. Uh, I like that. But it is okay to leave it open, right? I don't usually close them. Um, see what I'm saying before I actually go in. Uh, I do a backup. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't continue in payroll without closing the period at this point in time. Okay, well, I do that. Um, so in payroll, you definitely have to keep up with the period of processing. Yes, we do that. Um, the other modules, we recommend you keep up with it monthly and try to get them closed out so that you're preventing a few things like back testing and such, but also you're ensuring that your data integrity between that sub-ledger and the general ledger kind of stays intact as well. Um, if you compare the two and ensure they're don't want to have that if you don't do it for a year, and then you realize that you're off somewhere in the year, and then you can't what you did a year ago to go back and try to figure out where you're off. That's why we recommend the monthly close. You should up to date. You don't have to try to figure out what you did six months ago. Or five years. <laughs> <laughs> five years. That's true. <laughs> 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 Very true. So I have a question. How do you like when you say things? Because I don't. We don't fool with the payroll part of it, but. Okay. They like make a, a backup. <coughs> back you can do that anytime. Um, you can make a backup of the company theoretically anytime. It is going to be under Library Master Company okay. Maintenance. That's okay. where you're going to go to make a backup okay. of the company. You just want to pay attention. Don't get distracted when you're in that screen and make right. sure that you are truly copying to a clean backup company okay. that you have to.
getting your stuff at work and not in the bill. We didn't get that. We got some more some feedback on that. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
uh, customer interest item. So um, you can go in, with, for example, on the vendor magnet and type in an A, and all of your features and pros and things pop up. So if you don't just now, um, definitely save time instead of remembering, okay, put this in the uh, I think me and Amber back in the day were going through issues. What is that vendor? You just started and I don't know if there's such a vendor. Is this the one you have to run the index for? Okay. So this one does work not just on the maintenance screen, anywhere that that lookup exists. It works. So invoice data entry, manual meeting. The next one is table is off. Sorry, I do polling, but I just like to figure out how many people are using the table is off. I know you are. Everybody. So, anytime you're printing a journal or a register, um, customer invoices, uh, any type of remittance devices, um, it can automatically print that to a PDF and store it on your server. So, um, ever have to refer back to it, you can go into the Facebook office, pull up those PDFs, and view it. So you can print it out, suck a paper clip on it, put it in a file.
all and that letter or number as a shortcut. Okay. So the tab, and some are now in the middle of that list. Okay. So number tab, look across the top of entry screen. Yeah. Like all two, all three, jump sheets are that tab. So okay. you're in one data entry, you're on one, but you want to skip the address tab, right? Okay. Um, you just hit all three, you'll skip over to the third tab, which is fine. Okay. So only tab two. Okay. All right, cool. So it's all. Yeah, I recommend if you really like these a lot, like I said, this is just kind of a high level one. Mm -hmm. Just go into, I got these from Sage's help. Just go into the help and start to keyboard shortcuts, and they have a whole article. What's the one where you open up a customer manual or vendor manual instead of clicking down? Where you want to find your business name? Um, Sage's help. Yeah, 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 Sage's
was uh, blazing fast yesterday. <laughs> you might need that more than others. Uh, accept ACH payments and accounts receivable. Um, so you can now enter ACH payments uh, then they are invoice data entry, cash receipt entry, expanded invoice entry. Um, but the catch there is you have to use the ACH payment solution. So you can send your customers to ACH payment solution websites where they can pay you. And once they pay you, that is Has anybody else been getting a lot of calls about do you accept credit card payments? Um, I mean, like, I think it's kind of unusual in business like ours, but. Actually, it's becoming a lot more common. We recently, we've gotten our paying with credit cards and accepting credit cards because of the rewards program. Really? It was like another big company that and I'm like, they're using a credit card to pay their bill. I just thought it was. You're right, it's four points. Yeah, that's why they do that. Yeah, we have clients that get on procurement systems that use those points and they can take the procurement system with the points they earn. Wow. So a lot of free. Yeah. Our next one is the uh, keep windows open after checkboxes. I think the, most of the modules had this, but they added this, I think, for uh, bankrupt. Financial report. So, uh, got this. Um, those are your like, you know, it back. And, um, I'll have to re enter all your. Um, improved exports to Excel for some reports. Um, it's also for bank credit and financial reports. Um, they just made it to where some of the rows that did not have data that now is. So, uh, make sure reports are a little better. All right, new features in 2018, inline spell checking. So um, if you're typing in a memo or um, a note section, uh, anything that's going to get printed on the report, uh, I believe you can now spell check and spell words and underline it. Kind of like your Microsoft Word. And you can right click on that word at that point and wait for spelling that word. Version on the SAT report. Uh, I think most versions that I have right now is uh, I don't know if anybody goes in and creates their own report. But uh, yeah. Um, enhanced security options for visual interface jobs. Um, now you can, let's say you have an employee that only
like if you heard me uh, the email that we're calling you about say 100 feet and the difference between say 100 feet and say 100 say um, 100 feet is um, basically the platform that they just integrate with third parties and one of the third party systems that just came out um, for basically is the being marketing API automation at 100 feet we'll be able to take advantage of this Um, and basically, like the video said, you can take your invoices, bring them in by email, it will scan them, it will populate the data for you, populate the data for you. Um, it will match it up to a purchase order, so if you already have a purchase order out there, it will try to do a match and identify what that invoice purchase order that invoice is related to. Um, and then it will, it will route it through the system, so um, that invoice, let's say, is
just by going to select that journal number. I cannot figure out how to do that. I'm glad you brought this up. Guys, what you're saying? Like, I mean, I know I can just go and make, you know, the total so, amount yeah. of, a, so, of a, um, a couple of things about this. It's a good question. So okay. In general, what happens when you accidentally post it? Yeah, so everything's off. You know, my October and my November's off. <laughs> so there's a couple things you need to be careful of. There is, if you're on 20, 15, I believe, or higher, there's a button to reverse the journal entry. Okay. The issue you're going to have with that is that that journal entry is not going back to your AR online. Right. So you want to make sure you're very careful to match up the GL with an AL. Because the journal entry is here, what this should have been dated 1031, but they're dated December 1st. Doing a journal entry is not going to fix that. Right. Now, if you just need so to make your GL match up for a reference. Yeah, they were dated the right day. They just got pulled to the wrong day. What you can do is go into your account maintenance screen, this place. You select the journal entry. Okay. And then to the right of that, there's a little button on the right version that has like some arrows, kind of like a refresh button on your on your browser. Okay. A little arrow, that's the reverse button. So when you reverse that, it's going to actually generate a journal entry for you in general ledger journal entry. Okay. Just general journal entry. You go in there, but I would do a D to reverse it of course when the date originated. Then you can enter a reversing date of a date that's correct. Right. Which will reverse the reversal to the correct date. So you start off an account maintenance. That's where I was at. Account maintenance is where that button is at. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Any more questions so far? We Okay, so similar to the AP Automation Payroll 2.0 is uh, hot off the press. Meaning we have not yet installed it for anyone. They just still working out a few things related to this particular release. However, there are some very great features that will be available in 2.0, so we wanted to let y'all make y'all aware of them and let y'all know what's coming. And we will begin installing 2018, which has payroll 2.0 next year at some point, once we're comfortable with where they did with the product. And so y'all will be able to start taking advantage of these new features. Um, the first is a modernized user interface for payroll. So payroll still is very older version. Um, the interface is now going to look much more like the other models, like AP, account receivable, where it's going to be much more user friendly and have much more of the features you see in those other modules. One of those features is batch entry. So you'll actually be able to have batches for your payroll data entry, as opposed to only being able to do one at a time. Um, the next bigger item is payroll history. It is going to automatically save four years for you within the payroll model. <laughs> which is a very big deal. Very, very big deal. Um, <clears throat> so it's not going to wipe everything out at the end here, which is a huge deal. Um, and then the security perspective is the personally identified information is now going to be encrypted and uh, based on the user right within the system. So you will not necessarily be able to see social security numbers, things like that, um, on pull them into custom report type of thing if you don't have the right security access within the system. It's much more locked down than it currently is. Um, the next item is enhanced memo functionality. So it's going to be similar to the other modules that you have the better memo features as you do already in the company.
so you're not going to have to continuously keep track of making sure those tax tables are being updated in your system because they will be up to date. They're going to be in an online system that SAGE is going to contact during payroll processing, which means you have to have a very reliable internet source and network source to be able to make sure that during your payroll processing, you can, in fact, reach out to the internet to obtain those latest and greatest tax tables. Questions? We have a little video for you to, um, to kind of stay. That is for And so ultimately what is going to happen is payroll is going to also be somewhat um, removed from a perspective of upgrade that you can stay current with your payroll 
um, without having to necessarily ensure that your entire team. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but Panel 2.0 has a lot of cool new features, and it looks much more like the other module. This is just a preview, and it's not stage. Always caveat that when this is not necessarily right. what it's going to look <coughs> like when we release the final product, but that was a preview of it. So we just updated. <coughs> I'm assuming maybe we won't update in 2018. Y'all will recommend in 2019. So it's going to be a while probably before we even have to think about I mean, upgrade, I should say. Unless you want to take advantage of some of the newer features that are available yeah. for a certain reason, correct. It'll it'll still be out there whenever we get to your, okay. your newer version. You don't have to go to it right now. Okay. Um, or once we start uh, installing the 2018 version, unless you have a need. Okay. And we'll probably reach out. We haven't really discussed this, but all the payrolls, if you upgraded this year and just say, hey, if you want to go ahead and upgrade with you, do it for you, you know, we'll get you in the Earlier. Yeah, my boss probably won't want to pay. So right. You know. It'll still be yeah. there whenever you're trying to come. It'll still be there. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you come to me. Okay. <coughs> Somehow, I became the fixed assets person here. I'm not sure how. I'm going to ask you guys. I was like, oh, now you know everything about fixed assets. Um, so, if you don't have sage fixed assets, it's actually a really good appreciation tracking tool for assets. Um, it's not really new when you put it in here because a lot of people don't realize that they can use it internally for all of our clients' assets to be the depreciation for. It allows you access to manage the entire life cycle. So you you have a depreciation problem, you do not realize that you can actually do all of your tracking, your inventory, and everything from the various models of these assets. If you have a large number of assets, um, if you need to do the barcode scanning, you know, where you can put barcodes in all of your assets and go around and count them with the barcodes. So it's very, very useful. Does integrate directly with pretty much all the SAGE products, including SAGE 100. What that means is that if you receive an invoice for an asset and SAGE, we'll actually push over to the fixed asset for you and create that asset based on templates that you set up. You depreciate that asset or dispose it or those things, it'll push the journal entry back into SAGE for you. You don't have to go back and forth making the entry. So it's really great for that. It does, like I said, simplified asset tracking. So you can see the barcode simplified assets, locations on your asset. Um, it does comprehensive depreciation calculations. I think it has over 100 depreciations, which is fine. Um, but all of the big ones, if you use the straight line, obviously, makers, um, all the different kinds of depreciation that are out there, it has all of those in there. It's updated on an annual basis. So much easier updates than 7100. Um, that gets all of these calculations. Uh, I like to do physical inventories now with mobile devices. So you can have this like your phone or a tablet around and actually do your inventory for you. It has over 30 standard reports. So if you use any reports on photos assets, it's about your assets, appreciation reports, you have all that built in. And it also uses cultural reports, just like say 100. So you can create unlimited custom reports on your assets. And we'll talk more about this. Um, feel free to hang around after taking with you about it. It's fairly inexpensive and it's like this go. And it is a really good asset tracking and appreciation software. It's a lot of clients on both older systems on questions? I got to kick us off and I get to kind of close us out. But um, we recently learned that they acquired a company called Intact. Um, we actually have known Intact for a while now. It's a cloud-based system that we have been performing client accounting um, services on a cloud-based system. So cloud is the up-and-coming thing um, in, in systems and in the accounting world where you don't have a product installed. You actually access the product via your browser. Well, Intact has been around for quite a while, and every year we would hear, you know, Sage, saying, you know, we're going to bring on a cloud product, we're going to get a cloud product. Everything that they would build just never really made it to the market or never really made it to where you can sell like this is a product that we want to offer to our clients. Um, so if you can't, we can buy them. So Sage actually bought out Intact. And um, Intact is known as a best-in-class ERP system. So what that means is um, way back in the day, um, even whenever I first started at PNN, ERP meant a system that 
I've tried to be everything to everybody. I've tried to be your accounting system. I've tried to be your manufacturing system. Your, you know, anything related to your operations. Well, best in class takes that and says, you know what? We're going to focus on what we do best, which in impact case is accounting. And we're going to allow for you to connect very much like being work you saw earlier with other best in class systems that do AP automation really well, that do payroll really well, that do all these other things really well. So you know that everything that you're getting, you're able to pick and choose, and it's the best product that you can get. So with that in mind, Intact allows for you to have very easy integrations with other systems, especially because cloud-based systems now have this really easy ability to talk to one another using what's called APIs. If y'all ever heard of that, it's kind of a common language that these systems can talk to one another. But the thing that we love best about it is it's a rock-solid financial system, not unlike Sage, but now within the cloud. So we have offerings that we're allowed to say, you know, hey, client, if you guys are looking at a cloud strategy, we have a product that you can um, potentially evaluate. But the thing that we also really love about Intact is it has a real-time dashboard. And this is just an example of one of those dashboards, very easy um, to build. This would be an example of an executive performance dashboard that has actually across the top, if I can figure out how to use the pointer, it's a cloud performance card that allow you to easily see how things have changed over time, such as your net income, which hopefully you wouldn't have a um, thumb down, or your accounts receivable, hopefully that is you know, going up, um, but also your, your payments um, to your customers. But also being able to see things like operating expenses by certain departments, being able to see a trend of profitability for certain locations or various offices, and drop your P&Ls right on your dashboard. So it's just great, not only for the accountants in the room, but also if your boss is coming to you say, I need a report that shows this, okay? Well, why don't you just log in and look at your dashboard. I'll have that all built out. So this is pretty cool. We wanted to introduce this to you guys because you're probably going to start hearing more and more about this now in the stage world since um, they have adopted this and they know that this is going to become a Any questions about that? Stable Hunter is not going away. This is just a new product. I'll just tell you that's what I'm at with. All yep. that for. Oh, yeah. So we know you guys have asked questions along the way. We appreciate that you were able to come out. We are going to stay after if you guys have any other very specific questions.